Sophie, so good to see you. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Of course, here in Canada, we take very much uh, pride in you. So congratulations on everything. And I gotta ask you first off, I mean, this film, I saw it at uh, the Toronto International Film Festival just a few months ago in September, time flies. What was that like for you representing this film, the world premiere here in Toronto? Um, what was that feeling like for you, Sophie? Um, definitely very special. I think I, I, I've always loved Toronto because it's I come from Montreal and anything that's Canadian, I'm always very proud of. And I and I also think Toronto has an amazing selection of movies and um, always presents really great quality projects. So it felt really special to be honored at, at that festival and, and recognized by that festival. Um, and it was a very special premiere as well because um, I, um, Jeannie, who's Irina's daughter, was there and Roman, who is the baby that was born amidst the war, um, that was the child of that Jewish couple that um, Irina saved, was also there at the premiere. So that also felt, just, it was a very emotional moment for everyone. I can imagine. How hands-on were they when you started the project? You know, did you go to them, uh, speak to them? Uh, you know, tell me a little bit about having real life relatives it has to be so moving and helpful to you, I would think. Um, yeah, it really was. We were not actually put in contact with them for a while. I think it was, um, I don't really know about all of the behind the scenes, but for some reason, yeah. not everyone was on in into the project from the get-go. It. Um, it was more Dan Gordon, who's Irina's friend, and was more of so of his separate project. And he wrote the script and wrote the uh, a book on Irina's life. And so I communicated more with him and he told me about her and how they met and their relationship. And then Jeannie, I was put in contact uh, a little later on. She was part of the um, post-production process and um, I met her for the first time um, at TIFF actually. Yeah, okay, great. So tell me a little bit about um, how this all came to be for you, Sophie. What what an honor, honestly, to play a woman like this. Um, what a hero, what an amazing person she was to put her life online um, for these people and to hide them in the house, my God, where the, you know, where the Nazi commandant lived. I mean, come on, seriously. She had some balls on her. There's no question about it. How daunting was that for you to take this on? What was your reaction when you were approached and, and how you were going to approach the role? Um, it, it was, I mean, obviously such big shoes to fill, which was very overwhelming because she's led such an incredible life. And I, um, knew that people that knew her were going to watch this movie. And I, and I just wanted to live up to the expectations. Um, I think uh, I, I felt really comfortable because there was a lot of, I felt really um, supported in this project because I knew that um, Louise and I had the same vision for the character and um, I could find a fair amount of archives about Irina's life, a little like interviews of her speaking, um, not much on her in her twenties, like there's only photographs, but yeah. Um, and then I had also a, a dialect coach who helped me with the Polish accent. So I, I was in good hands, but definitely felt a lot of pressure taking on this project. Yeah, I can imagine. Where do you even begin? Um, aside from, you know, doing a little bit of that research, but of course it's it's also based on a play, Dan Gordon's play. Um, is that something that you, you know, you read through his screen, you know, his his play, or do you just kind of make her your own and, and go with what you're given in the script? I kind of base myself off of the script because at the end of the day, that's what people are going to watch. Um, uh, I, I definitely think that watching the archives that I found of her, like interviews of her speaking, uh, the first thing that really struck me was how full of light she still is. Well, she yeah. still was. Um, and she, she just, yeah, felt so warm and so kind and so nurturing. And I think that's what Louise and I really wanted to showcase in, in the movie is that, um, yes, we obviously tell her story and, and have to go through all of the atrocities that happened to her. But at the end of the day, we really wanted to show a bright side to her and that, and, and we really wanted to inspire a lot of hope with this movie. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, certainly. And especially at a time like this, you know, these are movies that we need to see because it doesn't matter what religion you are or where you are, you know, just, just that little bit of help. It doesn't matter if you help a hundred thousand people or 12 people, you know what I mean? It, it's so special. How did you, connect 
with her, Sophie, you know, being that age and what she did and you're so close to the age, you know, I, I just wonder how it makes you feel and how playing a woman like this changes you or makes you think about how you can put out good in the world too. I mean, yeah, you're, you said it so well. I think putting out good in the world is really what kind of um, I resonated with while reading the, the first draft even of, of the script. And I, and I think she's such a great example of that. Um, I think one thing she's really taught me that I used to do before, but that now is just a constant reminder that lives with me every day is how important it is to even the little actions. I think Irina is obviously such a hero and has done so many heroic things that I don't know that I could ever accomplish. But um, I think it's a constant reminder that a little goes a long way and it doesn't have to be big. It's, it could be smiling to someone or complimenting them or helping them with the back, but just to uh, you know, look around and, 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 and try to go out of your way to help people. And I think those little actions can have a huge ripple effect and, and end up making really a, an impact and a difference. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. Um, tell me a little bit about shooting on location. You shot in, in Lublin, right? Correct. Yeah. And, you know, very close to the Ukraine border. Uh, talk about that a little bit and what it was like uh, being I can't even imagine. I just can't even imagine. Um, definitely very intense. Um, it, yeah, it was it, it was a weird um context to be shooting in. Very emotional. I think it also helped at the same time because we felt the ramifications of the war so close to us. Yeah. Just at our hotel, there were refugees and and soldiers, and so, um, yeah, it, it definitely helped me to to feel closer to Irina's story. Um, and it was also a, a reminder of why we have to do this movie and why stories like this are, are still important to be told. Um, and then shooting in Poland, I mean, the city has so yeah. much history to it. Um, and then the crew did such an incredible job, the set deck people at, at constructing like, you know, the sets to make them look so realistic and and um, just being around like the swastika flags and, and the SS uniforms and riflery and machinery it was just, uh, it, it was really easy to tap into the emotion. Yeah, I, you know, I'm wondering, you know, I talked to a lot of young young actors and, and you know, I, when you went to school in, in Quebec, you know, growing up, um, how much were you taught about the Holocaust? Not much, actually. I remember um, talking about it when I did promotion for the book Thief. I, it blew my mind because um, I had to do my own research for the character. And that's when I started watching all the movies about like Schindler's List and the boy in the striped pajamas. And I was like, wow, we were never really taught this in school. And it's, and it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's huge what happened and, and I, and it needs to keep being told. Um, and it really shocked me that we weren't really, that we don't grow up learning about it. And so, um, and I think kids are the voice of the next generation. And I think in order for history not to repeat itself, I think yeah. we do need to educate um, people about it. Absolutely. Uh, I can't leave this interview without asking you about yellow jackets, of course. I'm <laughs> sorry, but I have to. Um, you are just so damn good at that show, Sophie. Um, how did you even get through some of that stuff that Shauna has to go through, honest to God? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's... Uh... I don't know it, it's it's fun. I I see it as like it's it's just it's so fun to be able to play something that's so foreign and and out of touch to you know who I am and what I've experienced. And I think it's really reassuring to be alongside a group of girls that I admire so much and that I think are so talented and that we kind of are all in the same boat where we're all like we've never experienced this, but let's try to figure it out and navigate it together. And um, we kind of base our performance off of each other and we play off of each other. So it's it's really fun to get to do it with all of these other girls. Yeah, and I love the fact that you all meet your older counterparts. And, you know, I love Melanie Linsky so much. I mean, I've been such a right. fan of hers forever. Meeting her and, and just talking to her about the Shaunas, like how beneficial has that been for you as an actor? I mean, I, mean, I couldn't, I literally could not ask for a better counterpart. She is the sweetest most generous kind person I've ever met and um it's funny Millie and I first sat down to talk about Shauna and we we talked a little bit about her and we realized we just both had we just understood her this, in the same way in the same light and then from that point on we never really talked about her 
ever again. Like every time we sit down like mid season to be like, let's go chat. We kind of all always end up talking about how she's doing and, and her life and her family and how I'm nice. doing. Um, we never really end up talking about Shauna. I think it just, it just works. We have the same sort of essence. Um, and after the first season, people seem to think it was a great match. And so I think now we don't want to yeah. overthink it and we kind of just keep doing what we've been doing. Yeah, it's fantastic. So any word on when we're going to get the third season? Have you I, would any... think, I would think um, fall of 2025. Uh, like okay. Next, this time next year, I I think. Yeah, we're, okay, we're that's shoot, okay. We'll I'll it wait it out. I'll yeah. wait it out. Okay, okay. And I, we're I'm going to shoot it next month. month, so yeah. <laughs> it's all good. Well, listen, I, always, a, always a pleasure to talk to you, Sophie. You are so good on Arena's Vow. Mm-hmm. I, honestly, my heart went out to you. Uh, you did wonder. You're, you're just so fantastic in everything that you do, and it's always my pleasure to talk to you. So thank you for your time, and have a good rest of your day today. I appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. Thank you for okay, taking Sophie, me. Take care. Bye. Okay, bye.